What's up guys? I'm Josh and this is our new trainer Cody. We are going to be going through our mobility assessment. It's something that we do with all of our clients. Um, we need to establish and identify any potential looming imbalances, uh, potential injuries that are going to manifest from just dysfunctional movement patterns and stuff like that. So we're starting down with Cody's feet because if your feet are dysfunctional, like which Cody's actually is, um, you're, that may translate all the way up the chain. Now, uh, he has already identified that he has flat feet. That's something that you're seeing a lot because we wear shoes. We wear casts on our feet all day, every day since we're little kids. And, and what that does is the muscles in our feet atrophy. Now, Cody's was probably um, just a gen uh, genetic. Yeah, so he's had it that way his whole life. So it hasn't translated up the chain yet, but that's something we need to potentially um, utilize corrective exercise and, and preventative maintenance in order to keep that from occurring. Now moving up the chain to the ankle, that's the next hub that we're gonna be checking because again, we, our feet are dysfunctional. We don't use them in the way that we are intended to and, and what that leads to a uh, little bit less with men, but that leads to a very limited ability to dorsiflex, to push your knee forward and that changes your whole squat pattern, your walking, everything along that line. So what are you gonna do is uh, keep your heel flat on the ground and push your knee as far forward. The rate limiter here is when that heel comes off the ground. So you can see even though Cody does have some um, issues with his flat feet, he's able to dorsiflex enough to get into a good position where it's not going to limit his squat, lunge, and movements like that. Next, moving on up the chain are the hips. The hips are really a cause for concern for a lot of people. They're a great design, they're incredibly mobile, you have a lot of freedom movement in the hips, but we don't utilize that freedom movement and we only do things in front of us, which leads to developing imbalances over time. So we're gonna start with the 90-90. All that is doing is checking internal extra rotation of the hips. So go ahead and get into position here. His right leg is obviously in external rotation, his right hip. What you can see is a pretty obvious limitation. Do you have pinching on that, on that left leg there? A little bit. So he's got a little bit of internal rotation deficiency, and that's incredibly common. There's a lot of ways to remedy to that, um, starting with just the frogger position, and, and we'll cover that later. But go ahead and switch legs, left leg in front of you. And then kick this leg out just a little bit this way. Yep, and you can see still internal rotation efficiency on both sides. Again, Cody is an athlete. These are things that have developed from athletics and things that are gonna have to be remedied by consistent, just continuously doing these things over and over again. Now, since we identified that Cody has some issues with internally rotating the hips, we're gonna start working on that by doing the frogger position. So you're gonna get into a, a nice straddle position Nice and stable here. So the main thing is do not allow your lumbar spine, anything to shift, your hips to shift, any flexion of the spine, nothing like that. It's nice and stable through here. And then sink back into it. And you can see his hips are internally rotating. It's probably pretty uncomfortable right there. So you just live in it. Just sit in it, perfect that movement, get better at it. It's going to be uncomfortable. As soon as you feel good there, come back forward a little bit and then sink back into it. Good. Moving up to the last hub for mobility, the shoulders. The shoulders really are an incredible, incredible design that took a very long time to evolve, but it's led us to be really, really unstable and it's allowed us to develop a lot of dysfunction because in our modern life, we're always in this shoulders forward, internally rotated position. We're doing everything in front of us. So what we're gonna check here is can Cody externally rotate with a fully erect spine? So we're gonna have you lean against the wall, tuck your tailbone underneath. So you should not be able to fit your arms back behind there. So your uh, spine's all the way erect. Push your shoulders all the way forward into a protracted position, pin them against the wall, and now back of the hands against the wall. So you can see Cody's extremely limited in external rotation. That's incredibly, incredibly common, especially in athletics. Now to start working on that external rotation deficiency in the shoulders, we're gonna start with shoulder lists locate. So you can do this with a PVC pipe, with a broomstick, with a band like we're using here. In the beginning, I prefer to use a band because we don't want to be limited by the stiffness of a stick. We want to be using something that has some play. So you're going to put your arms as wide as you possibly need to and then go all the way around into external rotation. You can see he's extremely limited. So this is going to be something that needs to happen consistently and he's going to need more uh, maintenance work in order to develop that external rotation ability. Now we want to make sure that Cody isn't just able to passively externally rotate. So if you're doing the shoulder dislocates, any of these stretches, you're able to get into that position, but whether or not you can own it is the other question. So what we're going to have is face pulls. The big thing here, we're using a band so he can't get really uh, ambitious and, and jerk it. He's going to go overhand here. And you're going to try to beat your elbows back with your hands so you can externally rotate at the shoulder. Keep it nice and wide. 
and brace your core so you make sure that you're not just extending the spine and, and fulfilling that I'm getting my hands back but you're not actually actually rotating. So what these mobility assessments are meant to identify, like I said, is any looming injuries and dysfunction. I mean, Cody's incredibly strong, Duty's incredibly active, but we all have a little bit of a blind spot in our training, and that can obviously lead to something rearing its head in the future and manifesting as an injury. So if you're interested in a mobility assessment, contact one of us, uh, talk to us at the gym here, and keep an eye out for some mobility classes on the weekends in the future.